Okay, guys, so last time we talked about linked lists, we left off here in that, this sense. Shh, too loud. Um, so let's review what we're talking about with linked lists and what we need to do in writing the code for it. Okay? So come on. Come on, computer. You can do this. Spinning circle. Okay, so here's the deal. We've talked about this before. A linked list is a class that will act as a collection. Do you guys remember what ADT standed for? A couple different options there. What could the A stand for? Dynamic. Yeah, dynamic is the D. Type it could be the T. Abstract. Abstract is the A, yes. Absolutely correct. It's composed of node objects. So a node represents each spot in the list. Nodes are self-referencing, which means a node is connected to another node. That creates the linking effect or the chaining effect. What we'll do is we'll write nodes that can hold anything by incorporating something we learned in the last unit, generics. We didn't have to do that. We could have also made a simpler linked list that just, for example, held integers. But then that may not help you guys when you get to your final project if you weren't going to link together integers. So the fact is, when we create this, you can use it directly in your final projects. And even in your final IB things, if you guys continue with IB, as these IB students did when I taught them linked lists, they just use the one we did in class directly in their project. So it reduced their work line time. Okay? So what kind of methods are we going to need in this class, the linked list class, to work? Well, at minimum, we'd need to add, right? That would be a given, right? So let's use that with the example that we have right here. So here's our list, our grocery list that we had built. Whoops. Um, I want to add to this grocery list. Okay, so let me just put that up there. And I'm just going to shrink that. So let's say I was going to add to this grocery list another grocery item. So give me another grocery item. Salami. How do you spell salami? Okay, salami. Carter's got it. There we go. Okay, so if I say add salami to this list, where do you assume it's going to go? What does that mean? After sugar. So you assumed it went, it, it went here, and then we'd link it in with one of our arrows like we were doing before, one of these, right? Is that what you assumed? Now, how did we know that was the end? We don't. We don't. So maybe, in addition to what we've been thinking about, we should keep track of the start of this list, and then possibly, I guess since you asked for it, the end of the list. Okay. Is that the only place I could have inserted or added salami? Oh, I could have put it here, too. Okay. So the add really just meant two things now, to the front and to the back, or what you called the start and the end. Is that the only place I could add this word salami? Okay. So, Carter, let's tell me where to put it in the middle. Be descriptive in telling me. In between eggs and bread. So he told me a very specific thing, which made it easy for me to understand. I can now slide this over and insert it between eggs and bread. He told me enough information for me to add it in the middle. Okay? Could he have just said, add salami, eggs? Would I know what to do? If he just said, add salami eggs, I could have put it here, right? Or here. So when I add it to the middle, I can add it in front of something or behind something. So when I say add, it's a little more complicated than just add. I think there could be about four different ways we could add something if we think about it. Okay, so now salami's in there. What else at minimum would we need to do with our list other than just add? So here you can see front, back, or anywhere in the middle. What else will we need to do with our linked list? 
Remove. You got it. Take it away. Delete it. Whatever word we want to use. Okay. So if I want to delete something, is that enough information? If I just say delete, can you delete it? What do you, what do you need to know? Okay, so if I so you need to know the item. So if I said delete salami, that would be enough information for you? Yeah. What if salami's in the list twice? How many salamis? And which one? So what do you mean by which one? Okay. So do you delete the first one? Do you delete the last one? Do you delete all of them? Right? Is that the only way I could delete something? Do I have to use the name of the item? Or in this case, in this case it's names. How do what think about it like an array? How how would I delete from Oh, a spot, right? Like an index. Now, linked lists don't have indexes like arrays, but we could treat it like an array. And if I said to you, delete spot zero, you guys would know what to do, right? Delete spot two, you guys could kind of figure out what to do, right? Could I use other words? Could I say, delete the start? Delete the end, and would you know what to do? So also, deleting has more to it. But it's, that's why, again, we're building this into a class, is it'll have all those things in there. And by the way, can I do either of these with an array? When I make an array, can I add another spot to an array easily with the array itself? No, I'd have to write a whole bunch of custom code and to do that. Can I delete from an array easily? Same thing. So if we build this into our class, we're already better than arrays. Now what can I do with arrays that's really easy? Well, that's the next thing we're going to need. We need to change spots in the linked list or mutate them. And we need to get access spots. So we need accessor mutators, setters and getters, because that's easy with arrays. You say array spot 2 equals 7, you just mutated your array. You say output array spot 3, you just retrieved or accessed a spot in the array. So we're going to need those. We need the equivalent of those in our linked list. And then again, just like an array, one of the things we do with arrays is we loop through them. We travel through them, or the more advanced term would be to traverse. So we're going to do that with our linked list as well, a way to travel through the linked list. OK, so that's our to-do list. If we were to make a methods to-do list, add to the linked list as a method. But again, let's be more specific. Why don't we name these things things like add front as a method? Okay? And it'll take a parameter, the, the item that I'm adding. And in this case, we'll be doing a generic item, right? We'll add to the back a generic item. We will add in front. We'll add this item in front of spot, and then maybe we'll give it a number. So in, spot, in front of spot zero, add this. Or we could give it another thing like salami, like when Carter said, add it in front of salami. We can add it to the back. Same thing, the item to a spot. So these are the way we will start looking at methods. Adding is more than just adding. It is sort of a collection of methods there that do, do, does that. Now again, with arrays, we go like array spot zero. But with this thing, since it's a linked list, we'll use a method like get this spot and set this spot to be this new value. Whereas with arrays, we just go a spot 1 equals 5. Here we'd say set spot 1 to be 5. Does that make sense? So the getters and setters, which we learned in the last unit, will come in handy in this unit with this big linked list. So in the end, when we're done, you'll have this linked list where you can use these methods, and it'll do all the stuff arrays can do, and way, way more, and be more efficient. OK. So the fact that adding and removing are not available in arrays immediately makes the linked list better in that sense, even though it's going to take some time to make it. Um, and since we're building it into a class with something advanced within it, like generics, it will pay off in the end for you guys that you'll have this linked list that you can use. And honestly, 
you can use it beyond this course. I have had students now for the last few years go on to university classes and say, hey, that link list we made in high school was way more advanced than the one we did in university class, and it was handy that I had it as a reference. The link list that we've been talking about looks like this. This is called a singly linked list because each node just goes to the next one and the next one after that. It's kind of like a one-way highway. You go one direction, and that's what makes it beautiful. Uh, never mind. Um, uh, the opposite would be a two-lane highway. So to think of that, let's just visualize that for a second. Our current link list, node, has a link to the next node, and on and on and on. Eventually, it reaches the end. The end we usually draw a slash to indicate that that's where the list terminates, okay? But that's a singly linked list. It is also possible to make a linked list where each node links to another node, but that node can also link back to the previous node, which means we have a slash here and we have a slash here. So this is a singly linked list. This is a doubly, which is a fun word to say, doubly linked list. What's the advantage of this one? What's the advantage over this one? Right, so for traveling or traversing, you can go either way through the linked list, which is sometimes handy, right? Starting at the back end and going towards the front, especially when we're talking about ginormous lists, is very handy. Plus, when we think about adding before and after, it's handy that we can move both directions quite nicely. Okay? So in this case, one direction sucks. Because <laughs> we're going to make a doubly linked list. We are. We're going to do it right. Okay? We're going we're gonna to make If we're going to make it, we're going to do it right. Okay, here's an animation that shows you, how, again, how insertion will go. Insertion into the middle. So watch here as I insert a node in this animation. So I just basically redirect the link to a new node and direct the new node to what the old node was pointing to. And now this has been linked into the chain. Does that make sense? So we'll write code that does that. When we delete an item, similarly, it's all about connecting the links properly. So watch, if I'm gonna delete 51, I just redirect this link around 51 and sever the other link, and now it's essentially deleted. Okay? Now, to talk about deletion for a second, we're talking about the management of memory. And in an ADT, that's one of the benefits, is it's using memory dynamically. In pr languages previous to Java, like C++, you had to write code to tell it to explicitly give up memory because it would hold on to the memory. One of the flaws of C++ is it would often have what are called memory leaks. So bad coders would leave a little piece of code in there that would not give up the memory. And then their game would start running and then all of a sudden all the computer's memory was used up because of that memory leak. But Java and C++ incorporated something into it called automatic garbage collection which essentially is an advanced version of memory management. And we will write a piece of code in our example that deals with that, okay? This dynamic memory allocation limits the system. So when it's running on a Mac versus a PC, it knows how to manage the memory perfectly. And nice languages like Java and C Sharp manage that for you. But we can also write code to do this. The amount of RAM on a computer is actually limited. There isn't an infinite amount of memory. And when RAM is full, it goes to the secondary memory or the hard drive. For those of you who are interested, we're going to learn more about memory management in the IB grade 12 class, as this year's IB students have been doing. That keyword new is actually what is creating new memory dynamically. That's why we write that word. Every time you see the word new in your code, that's what it means, is that it's creating new memory at that point. Okay. Since a linked list is a series of linked positions, we do need, and we just talked about that on the smart board, an entry point. But you guys even identified the fact that we might need multiple entry points. 
which is what you guys called the start and end, or could also be called the front and back. Traditional names, though, for those are the head of the list. And what do you think the other side's called? The tail, that's right. But you don't have to call them that. You can call them front and back. You can call them start and end. Traditional names are not necessarily need to be used, but when we create our link list, we will use the words head and tail, okay? To keep them traditional and also match up with hopefully any post-secondary education you guys get in computer science. Now, here is an examination of the doubly link list as well, okay? Including the head and tail. This is essentially what we're gonna be making. We're gonna make this a node that has references to the front and back, or sorry, the next node, and the, what would you call this? Previous node, yeah. We will, once we build the link list class, we'll have a reference to the head and the tail. Okay, it's a doubly linked list, and the contents of our node will be a generic item. So we can make it a linked list of anything. Okay, so this will make it an incredibly useful piece of code for you. Exactly. And not just your final project this year, you'll find a project next year and on into, basically the thing we're making could be used right into industry. It's going to be that powerful. Now that's a bit of a big claim I think I'm making on my part. But nonetheless, it will be a link list that will be so well constructed that you will absolutely only have to do this once and then just use it for any programming that needs it from this point forward. Well, that's why if we take a look at the project, that's why when I had you guys create this, I said, make a collections package with these two things in there. This is not testing. Down here is for the testing, but this collections package, you can copy and paste that package right into another project and it'll bring the two classes with it and then boom, it's ready for use. That's the idea, okay? I didn't tell you to make them yet? Well, let's do that now. And I'm just going to pause. Okay, so let's just get a little start on our node class now. So if you remember in the last unit we wrote into the NetBeans template, the ability to automatically write in a couple of methods. It was part of advanced classes. So you should have a two string method, an equals method, and a clone method that we will fill in later. We will be doing those for these classes. But let's talk about the node specifically. And I'll even move the constructor down. We'll do the constructor next week. Here's what we know about the node class. It holds a generic. So in the signature line of the node class, let's indicate that by putting the angle brackets with a letter inside. We'll go with the letter T to say this node will hold a generic item. Let's make that item a property of the class. So the property of this node class is a private T piece of data. So that's the data that this node holds. It's private, okay? Or should we make it private? Let's make it public. That's more logical because we want to change that data. We want to assign it values. We want to read the data out of the node. So we'll make it public in this case. We're never actually going to make nodes the linked list class will make the nodes. Okay. Now, the other thing about this class is it's, again, what's called self-referencing. So this is what I'm going to leave you with today is these last two lines of code. In addition to that property, we're going to have a public node called next and a public node called previous. Okay. Now this you haven't seen before. You haven't seen a class that uses another version of itself inside itself. It's kind of like recursion, but it's not because it's not a method. It's a class that makes a reference to another object of the same class, which is what I meant when I said it was a self-referencing class.